racing. You wanted the best. You got him for a breast. Often imitated, never duplicated. The greatest show on dirt. The world of outlaws. This is the original eSport racing game. This is iRacing. Racing is all about momentum. Carrying better speed through the corners means higher speeds down the straights. And while we'll see that bear out here today at Monza, let's not forget that momentum in the championship is important as well. Acosta has continued to rifle off good finishes, even on average days, and that's what's allowed him into the 20-point lead he currently has. We'll see if that momentum carries on or is stopped today as we get ready to watch round eight of the PRL GTE Sports Car Series. And you'll see it all live here on the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esports Network. Hi, I'm Joe Peak, and with me in the booth is Samuel Ryman. Behind the scenes is our director, Sean Cracker Zambros, and he's using cameras provided by Dougie Beard. Sam, it's the Temple of Speed, but with all these chicanes out there, it looks like it'll be a tricky day at the start of the race. Yeah, absolutely, Joe. Considering we have a lot of cars here today, so here's the course we're going to have to navigate. Obviously, this track is famous, infamous in some ways, for its long straights, which can lead to drafting battles. But also, the good news for our leaders is it uh, enables them to get around lap cars without too much difficulty. The chicanes are plenty, offer plenty of opportunities for passing around here. Unfortunately, they also offer plenty of opportunities for things to get a bit ugly. Fins aren't too ugly when you only send one car out there, so let's do that with Adria Sassi lap car. All right, we've got Taylor Burris in the GSRC4 GT, so let's do a lap around Monza. Down the pit straight, you'll come up to Redofilio with a huge amount of speed. Expect the draft to allow drivers a good chance to attack into here. But it'll be tricky to nail the braking, especially if you're trying to take it that couple feet farther. It's not uncommon to see drivers take a cut course penalty here. Stay off those large curbs, get the power down, and now you're on your way towards Curva Granda. There's nothing much to this corner in a modern GT car. Just hug the inside to make it the shortest distance possible. However, once again, because of the speeds you'll reach, the driver behind could find the slipstream and then attempt to overtake in Della Rosia. 
But just like the first chicane, there's a big danger in either cutting the chicane itself or taking way too much curb by getting greedy. Both will be costly. After that, you've got a short blast of the first Lesmo. It's always tempting to turn in too early to this corner, but if you do that, you'll probably just understeer off on the exit. There's not a terribly long straight down to the second Lesmo, so it'll be rare to see passes into here despite being the sharper of the two corners. Besides, it's much more important to get yourself a good launch because it's another long run down to Ascari. This last chicane is unique compared to the other two in the way it has three apexes and is taken quite a bit faster. The shallow curbs are fine, but avoid those black and yellow pills which can actually damage the car if you're not careful. Another good corner exit is important, but this time pass attempts into Parabolica might be a bit more rare. There isn't quite as much braking into here as some of the other corners, and it's also smarter to just wait until the front stretch to utilize the draft. This 180 degree bend really opens up on the exit, so you'll get back on the throttle earlier than you expect. And that'll be really important to keep yourself from getting swamped by everyone else who found the power sooner than you. But hopefully you've now finished a lap around Monza. speeds at the forward reaches around here. Fernando Border going to be representing that car with uh, hopefully a couple others. It's not usually well loved, but one thing we do love is our sponsor, which is today SIMSA. The Simulation Motorsports Affinity provides many consulting services from completely customizing simulators to managing teams, individual drivers, and complete events. They're working hard to bring organizations, companies, manufacturers, teams, and drivers together at one place to support and promote sim racing internationally. They're also bridging virtual and real motorsports by providing a network between these two, involving sim racers, real drivers, teams, managers, engineers, and of course, motorsport fans alike. You can find out more about how you can get involved at Simza.net. Today's broadcast, excuse me, is also proudly sponsored by Butt Kicker. Butt Kicker products create an incredible immersion and realism to every game. Feel every nuance and truly put yourself in the driver's seat. The winner of Division 1 here in the PRL GTE Sports Car Series will get a Butt Kicker Gamer 2 or a simulation kit. Also, both drivers of the winning team and the team's championship will get a free t-shirt. Check them out at thebuttkicker.com. Now, that championship, uh, the drivers in particular, let's see how that is standing. I mentioned 20 points between Acosta and Eisler, but Acosta has generally been quicker than Eisler thus far in the season. So it's not voting well, even though Christian has been pretty consistent until last week. Uh, Diaz has not been showing up, and we do not see him again here today. So he probably won't be a factor. He continues to fall down the order. And then it's Holland and Peterson behind them. But Holland, another one that did not have a good week last week. So he's got to try and rebound as well. What about uh, the competition for those T-shirts, Sam? How's the team's championship going? Well, we'll have a look right here. Punto CL Racing has a healthy lead over Mivano Racing this deep into the season. Uh, almost 50 points over them. A similar gap between second and third in the standings between Mivano and V Power. One Sim GTR White and RSR Esport, and a nice little battle for fourth there at the bottom of the team standings. Uh, if you've never watched the PRL GTE Sports Car Series before, this is how the races go for these. Uh, we are in round 8 out of 10. You can see that little droplet means they have one drop week. That's one of the big things that is saving Christian Eisler right now with his poor result last week. Uh, they have four different makes of cars that you can see listed that they can drive. And the races last 60 minutes. However, there is one scheduled pit stop, which is because they've limited the fuel. Uh, the Setups are open, though, and they have an incident cap of 20. Easy to rack those up at a track with a lot of chicanes like here. And they have some bonus points that they can try and get, one of which that they're working on right now because qualifying is happening. So that'll settle the bonus point for the pole position. As always, you're watching this on the iRacing eSport Networks. Make sure and subscribe. All you got to do to do that is click on the big red button that says subscribe, and then you'll get all of their races in your YouTube feed. Also, if you'd like to support the Global Sim Racing channel, check out our merch store, which we've recently opened. We've got all kinds of products that you can buy, including a beanie. And this is a very special beanie to keep you warm in the winter because it automatically plays Days of Thunder's theme when you're within one mile of any racetrack in the world. So you wanna get that so that you can uh, enjoy yourself anytime you get within range of your favorite racetrack locally or maybe traveling somewhere around this beautiful globe. Taking a look at the qualifying, 
Uh, you can see Christopher Pfeffer is currently on the provisional poll with Abner Acosta chasing. Now, these two have been pretty quick as of late, Sam, but it seems like Pfeffer's had the measure of Acosta in the past two races. Yeah, last race, that was definitely the case. So, but qualifying here, Joe, I, I don't really know how much to read into these times because you can see down the front straight just now that, you know, uh, your lap could very much well be determined by how well uh, you draft or slipstream the car in front of you. And that could lead to a bit of a mixed up grid here. So it could be a chaotic opening few laps, not only because we have a field of... Uh, Oh, let's get the exact number on this. I think about 32 cars, a field of 32 cars trying to dice their way, battle for positions for these chicanes on the opening lap. Even if we don't see any spins or wrecks, I'm sure there's going to be some vendors that come out looking a little worse for wear. And then you throw into the fact that we could have some points contenders starting around 10th place or so. That's where Eisler is right now. He's all the way down in ninth. So, uh, uh, yeah, it, it could be uh, an interesting opening few laps here at Monza. And then, of course, with this many cars, I'm sure we'll be seeing some drafting and slipstream and battles all throughout the race. Yeah, certainly throws a, a bit of unpredictability into things. Now, you may have noticed that we're getting a little bit of cloud cover here and there, and that's been on and off all through the warm up as well. But since it is in the late morning, it's getting towards the middle of the day. It's about uh, 11. Uh, in the morning here, virtual standard time. The temperature has been going up since we came in for practice. It's now 93 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. I wonder if that will affect how anybody sets up the car or potentially how this uh, this qualifying goes, if anybody maybe is only able to get their quickest lap at the start with it being potentially cooler than right on board with Derlicka, who returns once again, didn't get to try and compete for very long over at Barcelona and right now he's smack dab in the middle of the field yeah and there's always a trance it's not unheard of for the weather to completely shift between uh, qualifying and the race sessions if it's been designed for a little bit of a jump in the time of day uh, so we'll wait and see how that all unfolds but right now there's definitely a lot of cloud cover so if I'm out there I want to try and get a good lap in right now because the track's going to cool down a little bit have a bit of extra grip there might be some time out there to be gained Sam you talked about the possibility of uh, something happening into the first chicane and things such as that uh, you know maybe ruining a couple races we actually saw that with Isler last week and uh this week, the driver that he had contact with was Diego Garrido, uh, who is currently in third. So I'm kind of wondering, has Diego kind of taken notes from last week and figured uh, he needs to be a little bit less aggressive? Or is he going to keep that that sort of Max Verstappen-esque uh, approach up? Or, or what's going to happen here? Because, boy, I would not want to be one of the drivers around him based on how history has gone coming into that first corner. Yeah, well, in Diego's defense, even though he made an aggressive pass at the opening of the last round at Barcelona, that's not what triggered the incident. It was kind of what happened coming out of that chicane that set everything off. Uh, so I don't think he's going to approach this start any differently, especially with him sitting third place right now. And one main reason why is the front straight here is a lot longer than what it is at Barcelona. You, you have uh, more of a run into the first corner. So we could see some drivers who maybe want to pick up a position or two, try and be aggressive, try and make it three wide into that first game. Normally, though, honestly, and I hope I'm not speaking too soon, there's a 50-50 chance that I am, uh, drivers are cautious into the first game. They know what the deal is. It's that second game where I think things get a little bit ugly when you know, you're about to go into the Lesmos, you're about to go the ramp into the Scarry, you realise this is probably your last chance to make up a, a good position or two uh, for a couple of corners. That's where I think uh, we, we normally see a bit more calm. Yeah, that's a fair point, and I kind of want to watch that myself to see about how things play out. Now, Christopher Pfeffer, still on that provisional pole, has about a tenth and a half over Acosta, but he's coming around now to cross the line. This will be his third time lap, but no, it won't actually, because he must have had an off somewhere. That one did not count. Where is Eisler as well? I think he, well, he just had another one that he just started. In fact, I think he is starting a time lap just now, and last one was an out lap for the 727 
Still has enough time to complete one more, but that's it. This will be his last opportunity. I'm disappointed we don't have a pack of cars going around the track right now at 50 miles an hour, trying to let everyone go in front. Oh well. <laughs> Enrique is going to abandon his final lap, so that's qualifying over for him. Simkovic is coming around, and he's down in 31st. The last car, actually, with a lap time on the field, only Gary Schilling is not set one out of our 32. Spencer not going to improve that lap, as he also had an off track somewhere. And Gary Schilling just turned a lap and went up to 30th, so all 32 drivers in the session. And Ooh. Acosta goes to pole. Wow. So Pfeffer is not going to have control of the field by two hundredths of a second. Yeah, Pfeffer has abandoned his lap. He is done. And Acosta has time to do one more if he really needs it. We're down to less than 20 seconds to go. More drivers getting ready to start that last sprint around and across the line. And I think the first to get the checkered flag is going to be Brett Thurman. Number 69 down in 25th is has is carrying a trail of cars behind him leblond is heading to the inside and he tips into him as they lose control so kenny rodriguez instead is going to be the first to take the checkered flag here in qualifying he's just behind them in 26 but he doesn't improve and here comes isla he's coming to finish the lap he was getting a little bit of a draft from john ambrose can this move him up the order from ninth yes it does he goes sixth so that's going to make life a little bit easier for christian who else is going to try and complete their lap? Yanicelli looks like he's not going to try and do it. So let's jump to Holland, who is just demoted down a spot by Eisler climbing up the order. Holland sits in eighth position. He fell down the order twice, unfortunately, back at Barcelona. He's going to be wanting to have a few less problems during the race. But first, he's got to get himself... Uh, at least up to a decent position here. And he thinks that eighth is the best that he can do because he comes into the pits. Still have a uh, dress Bertralika going out there. looks like he's going full song, coming through a Scari right now in the Ford GT. Bit of a different car. We have lots of Porsches and, of course, the Ferraris who feel like they're on home turf today. But the Ford GT, not massively represented in this series, but it's out there and it definitely stands out, especially with a bright brew. Hopefully, if he doesn't go airborne, uh, not just because that means he will be out of a race, but no one else will be able to see him. So here comes Dresper out of a final turn in that number 97 blue machine and into the pits. Practice pit entry. Oh, no, no, he does stay out. <laughs> Looked like he was going that way. He was going very close to the wall. And he jumps up to 11th. Well done. Ah, nice improvement. In fact, that makes him the quickest Ford. He is joined by Fernando Borda, who I mentioned driving a Ford, and Luis Enriquez, the last of them. There's nobody else uh, in that machinery, unfortunately. But three of them is enough, and that's going to set our grid for today. So let's go through our starting order. Abner Acosta in the dying stages manages to get to pole ahead of his new rival, Christopher Pfeffer, starting in second. Caden Bean will be P3, and then on the outside of row two, it is Diego Garrido. Paolo Munoz starts in fifth, followed by Christian Eisler on the outside of row three. Lucas Basigalupo, who was challenging for the lead, but had to settle for second, uh, finish, or starts in seventh today. David Holland will be next to him in eighth position. Anthony Pisano will be starting ninth, and Sean Romick in P10. Please be courteous and silence your cell phones now for Ford versus Ferrari. Here comes Dress Pedralica from 11th on the grid, ahead of Fernando Borda. Jonathan Almanar will be starting from 13th, ahead of Horatio Kalkin. Ignacio Rodriguez Fredes will start from 15th place, ahead of Stacey Dunnigan. And then Elijah Mitchell and Sean Duhamel will be on row number 9. Rounding out the top 20, James Hobb and that Don Bowden. John Ambrose was looking a lot better in warm-up than he did in qualifying. He starts 21st. Luis Enriquez starts 22nd. Leif Peterson, unusually low qualifying for him, down in 23rd. Jeff Carollo starts 24th. And Brett Thurman, the 25th position. Kenny Rodriguez will be starting in 26th. Then, behind them, it'll be James LeBlanc starting P27. Christopher Albright, 28th. Donald Olson, 29th. Top 30, rounded out by Gary Schilling. Uh, Francisco Yaniselli and Spencer Simkovich, the last two on the field. And uh, the last there on our starting grid graphic, as you can see, they are now all out there. And 
lining up behind the Porsche pace car, which will start just beneath the oval and heading down towards the Ascari chicane, the old oval that you can race here on iRacing. Uh, but they won't be doing that today, thankfully, because, boy, would that be a wild race seeing them uh, take GTE cars around there. You mentioned that we've got places to pass, and most of them, I would assume, would essentially be into these, these breaking zones for the chicane, Sam. Yeah, and of course, these uh, GT cars uh, being, um, you know, the, the monsters that they are, kind of bigger machines and a bit heavy machines it's gonna make uh if you overshoot your braking markers it's gonna make things very interesting for the drive for yourself and the driver in front of you these drivers just had a two hour and 40 minute long practice session as well as that 15 minute qualifying session so hopefully they've got time to iron out all the cobwebs but you can see joe it is a little bit sunnier now the track is a little bit warmer maybe that's affected things everyone's brakes are going to be cold their tires are going to be cold the track is going to be a bit warmer. It may still have a little bit of dust on it from qualifying. So all these are factors that these drivers are going to have to consider as they roll off into Ascari on the warm-up lap with Acosta leading the field ahead of Pfeffer. Will it be that way when they come around here at competition speed next lap? Well, we'll find out in a couple of moments because they're on the run-up to the Parabolica. The pace car will peel off and we will be racing for one hour here today at Monza. The question is, do you want to be in the lead? Because, again, with that fuel pit stop, could somebody maybe tra play some tricky strategy games and save some fuel riding behind their rival for a majority of the race? We've seen drivers like Derlica and Acosta use that very well uh, previously this season and seasons prior. We come down to that final parabolica corner and around where the pace car is going to peel in. Acosta will be given control. Last time it was a very early start for Pfeffer. What's Acosta going to do? He's staying tight up behind that Porsche. Waiting for him to duck away. There he goes. And it is a soon, a, an early start, but uh, it's a decent jump over Pfeffer. Acosta already pulling a gap. Caden Bean, as the green flag waves, is to the inside of our winner from the last two rounds. Just behind them, Garrido starting to get a little bit of a run from fourth position. Could he maybe demote him one more down from second to fourth? Looks like he's going to deny it for now. Everybody coming together, trying to stay. Fourth. Oh, they are coming together, Joe. There's contact. Pfeffer and uh, Diego. Robin Fender's coming out that first again. And they're still side by side. Pfeffer a little bit behind Munoz now. Oh, but it looks like Eisler is going to fall back. Oh, what happened? And that's Actually, Lucas Bassigalupo going very slow. He must have had a slowdown penalty. We got one car around. That's Stacey Dunnigan and the Della Rosa chicane. Two more off. One of them is the Fords. Three, four more off. You were right, Sam. It looks like this was the danger zone down into the second chicane. Yeah, I was a little concerned about that. So there were some games being played there at the start. Diego and uh, had rolled back a little bit to try and get a jump on the, his competition. It just didn't work out for him. I'm not sure how the contact happened between himself and Pfeffer. Pfeffer was able to recover a bit better. He's dropped back to fourth place, whereas Diego's in sixth, actually. He just made a position up on a David Holland. So a little bit of contact up front, uh, but, but they're all still running. He's actually competing with Eisler right now. He's the darker Ferrari that you see to the outside as they head towards the Parabolica. Garrido with the inside line is able to sneak through, but are we gonna see a turnaround here as Eisler now rides behind. We're on board with Holland just with them. Eisler's gonna get the inside in a good slipstream at the start. So he's gonna try to move back into fifth. It's been a decent climb with one position gained on the first lap for Eisler but he's got to work hard to try and retain it. So Acosta leads the bean ahead of Munoz, Pfeffer and Eisler, as you mentioned, in fifth place ahead of Garrido. So the only driver, oh, a big pack it's, of cars behind them. It, yeah, the only driver. Sorry, Almanar went off a cut course penalty on lap two for the number 128, and he's going to fall way down the order. You can see that Ferrari is losing gobs of positions. 
same thing has happened to John Ambrose. This is definitely not something you want to have happen, especially this early on when all these cars are still bunched together and top speed and momentum means so much. We got the challenge for the lead, though. Vina's really ran down the cost. He's right in his rear wind. He might think about doing something in the Scarry or maybe even the Parabolica. It was a bad exit out of the second Lesmo from Acosta, but that's a big lift from Bean. In fact, almost bump drafting him. You can see how close he's getting on the run down to the third chicane and into a scarring. No attempt to pass, so Bean doesn't seem all that interested in moving ahead of Acosta right now. Yeah, it's interesting on Ivason. Oh, oh uh, Feffer's gone off. Feffer is very slow down the back straight. Well, so he's... Lost spots to Holland, lost spots to Garrido. Garrido running Holland right to the grass there. There was almost a calamity going on, but Holland takes the position, gets right onto the rear wing of Weissler. They're all over the place. We're going to get a quick replay of Pfeffer here. Yeah, he's going to blow the Ascari chicane. Absolutely cut right through it. And part of it is because it looks like he goes right over top of the, of the curbs to the inside here. Oof, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and as we continue on this replay, we jump up to the front because going into the parabolic of that lap, Acosta gets past by Bean. Well, we, we've we also keeping half an eye on the, all of this chaos by the top four. And there you see Bean going into the lead, a nice move into the parabolica. I think we had no issues because I saw a lot of positions during that replay as well. But... Up at the front, being ahead of Acosta. Munoz still giving chase. It's a three-car oh. breakaway before... Uh, Garrido Whoa. spun. Garrido has spun. You see in the background there. He uh, got too much curb, looped it, and there was a... Oh. oh, he comes out in front of... Gets hit by Mitchell. Two cars, three cars, four cars. And that's going to be some kind of penalty, I think, down the road for Diego there. That was not a good move. Absolutely not. Uh, we saw John Ambrose, though, making a great avoidance in all that. This is Diego's initial incident, spinning off in Del Rosia. And you're right, as soon as I saw him come on, I, I was not sure what he was attempting. He's waiting for a gap here, but it's just not there yet. And then the Shell Ferrari, you see off to the inside, that was Ambrose gaining a lot of spots just by staying out of trouble. Yeah, very unfortunate for a few drivers have been, uh, well, it's hard to say anyone's having a quiet race so far. So much has been going on in these opening few laps. Great heads up. A lot of people involved in that one. In fact, we've got Eisler and Heb already in the pits. Did we see what Eisler got involved in, actually? Was he a part of that? Meanwhile, we're looking at uh, the battle between Pisano and Derlica. This is for fifth position. Three wide as they come down into the uh, first chicane here, into the inside. It's going to be Basicalupo who gets both oh. of them. Pisano comes out ahead of Derlica as they almost come together with Romig banging doors. It is wild out there right now. A huge pack of cars, and you saw at the back of it a car off. That was Fefe. Fefe has had another off, so things are really going downhill for him today. But boy, this is a uh, massive pack of cars coming into the chicane. Oh, are they all going to get out of it? Okay, that was an aggressive pass on border by Cal Kim back there. But yeah, they all got through at that time, all right. Yeah, Drulika ahead of Romig through there. Uh, Cal Quinn taking ninth place as border falls to 10th. Now coming out of the Lesmos, they're finally single file for a little bit. Pisano's loving this. So is Basicalupo because they've left, left them in the dust as these four finally get themselves a little bit settled out. Well, I can tell you what happened to Eisler. It was a bizarre incident, Joe. David Holland was drafting him down the front straight, went out to pull out to pass and clipped his back fender, turned Eisler into the wall on the front straight. Oh, so, one car way out wide there in the background. Did he get the wall? Trying to see who that is. It was a black car. It must have been Almanar, maybe? I think it was Almanar, and he didn't hit the wall. But Simkovic also with issues into Ascari. I wonder if it was related with Almanar here, because I'm seeing Almanar heading to the pits. 
as we watch the replay. Just unrelated, comes to a halt. He managed to keep from backing into anybody, and this is Almanar after his incident coming down into pit lane, it looks like. He just uh, unfortunately went a little wide. He must have got the curb, maybe got some damage that forced him to call it a day. Where you go, I viewers may have noticed that there's been a switch for the lead again, the Costa and Bean. Uh, it was from a slowdown penalty. Bean made a mistake at the chicane a couple of laps ago, and that uh, handed the lead back over to Acosta. So these two haven't really been involved in the battle, Joe. Both times the lead has traded hands. It's uh, been kind of uh, a gimme, but uh, still keeping each other in close quarters in the early stages of this race. Very early stages, because we're only nine minutes into this thing. You can see as our leaders head down towards the Parabolica one more time. Pfeffer has not been having a good time today. He's managed to get into 14th after falling way down the order and is a little bit clear at least now, just having gotten by Corolo, Peterson, and DeCamel. And I think they got a change for position with Borda and Romig. This is for eighth. Romig to the uh, outside of Borda and tries for the switchover but he's going to have to slot back in line. Instead, he gets into the slipstream. See if he can maybe get a little bit of a nose ahead down into the Redifelio chicane, but nope, that's a lift. So he's not interested now. Also, a change of position between Pisano and Basagalupo. Looks like Pisano yeah. now up to fifth. Yeah, that was uh, pretty much just a draft and switch down the front straight. Uh, Pisano was able to get a nice round out of a parabolic. Yeah, get the slipstream on Basagalupo and had the pass complete by the first turn and see if Bassi Galupo challenges back. Remember, he made that three wide move a couple of laps ago. He had the slow down penalty early in the race, so he's probably a bit angry with himself for that and might want to get back up there. So we'll see if uh, fifth switches back. Now, again, Joe, we, we should emphasize just because some drivers switch positions on the front straight, they might not necessarily be battling each other. They could uh, be trying to work with each other to capture a couple of cars in front of them. To the lead, and now Acosta has lost time to Bean. And uh, it's also... Sorry, that's a lap car behind them. I thought that was Paulo Muno, so I was going to say it became a three-car battle, but no, that's actually a lap car of uh, Brett Thurman behind them. Yeah, already a lap down, unfortunately. Bean keeping Acosta honest. And for those wondering what Eisler's uh, fall to the back, and actually this is very similar to Barcelona because he's still taking repairs. Uh, the championship, unfortunately, is swinging way in favor of Acosta now, who leads this race, looking to take maximum points because he's already got the bonus for pole. Bean now behind him. Are they going to switch around again? They come down into the Redifilio. Bean's not going to jump back in front for now. He's going to stay in second, at least for this start of the lap. Uh, again, Diaz not competing, so with him being in third, he's not really a part of this. Really, the only other one that's up in the points that could maybe uh, come into play is David Holland, and even then, Holland is quite a few points behind in the championship, and he sits down in fourth right now. Yeah, and Holland was the one who tipped Isla into the wall that put Isla in the pits. Um, so, you know, I'm sure he doesn't feel too good about that, but... One thing that would clear him up, I'm sure, is if he can beat Acosta on track today, which isn't out of a question. There's only five seconds between them. Got a battle going on here. Drove for 15th place. Uh, Leif Peterson has gotten by Jeff Carullo. Uh, both of his drivers qualify outside the top 20, work their way up into the middle of the field. That happened down into the first chicane. Duhamel, or excuse me, Duhamel is behind them in the 17th spot, giving watch, seeing if maybe something will open up between them. They come through the Lesmos. They're being also chased by Stacy Dunn again. A few seconds behind, you could see the black Ferrari a little bit back there. Still needs to hustle a little bit to get involved in what's happening. So Bean gets right onto the back of our leader, Costa going up into Parabolica. Doesn't make a move, but he could have just been setting him up for a run here as they come down to the front straight. It, no point in tailgating or following someone this close, though, unless you were thinking about passing them. Let's see if... Oh, okay. No, I'm wrong. Bean is content to ride second there, saving fuel. 
I was just gonna say, passing or fuel saving? One or the other. And from what I'm watching of Bean, I'm thinking it's fuel saving now. It doesn't seem like a lot of action is happening, so I think we finally have a little bit of calm to maybe try and dissect the accident that happened at the very opening. Let's see if we still have that replay. Oh, no, we do have some action on track. Ambrose getting a spot away. John's got the inside of Fredis as they now break for the first corner. So give John Ambrose P11, and that's after qualifying in 21st. We saw this last week, though, and John was a little bit uh, accident prone last race. So hopefully he's able to keep it a little bit cleaner and actually retain these positions. Yeah, and Ignacio Fred is running behind them right there. He's got a bit of damage to the front end, so I'm sure that's uh, hurting him down these long straights. It, this might actually help him a little bit. It, he might just be able to find a place in line and do some drafting on John Ambrose, keep his top speed up. He's got some ways to go up to Cal Quinn, which is in 10th, does Ambrose, about six seconds between them. We've come back to our leaders, Bean chasing Acosta, still no attempt down into the Ascari chicane. Uh, Munoz looks like he's only 1.5 seconds back. Has that actually gotten smaller since we last looked? I wonder if we could get a lap comparison. Because I feel like uh, the 3 to one is has gained a little bit here. Yeah, he was three, second, three seconds down the road a couple of laps ago, so he has gained a bit. I almost wonder if that lap car Brett Thurman might have helped him out a little bit, gave him some slipstream speed as he was coming up to lap him. There you see the graphic on the screen, how he's been able to catch him. And of course, this might be making Bean a little bit impatient. He might be realizing, hey, we've got someone catching. If he thinks he's faster, maybe he should try and uh, make a move by Acosta, but he doesn't want to do that right now. In fact, maybe he wants a third car to get involved, because that could help complicate things for Acosta. Granted, it'll also complicate it for Bean. So it all depends on which way he would love this to start to develop. But you could see on the uh, on the the sheet at the bottom that we showed that Munoz definitely gained. Now they've dropped Holland by about 4.3 seconds from uh, the back of Munoz. So unfortunately, the nearest championship rival for Acosta is nowhere close to being able to try and challenge from now. That could all still change. It's still a lot of racing left to go. On I racing. On iRacing, Joe, I normally have a lap six rule. I say on the first six laps are crazy, and then the field starts spreading out and starting to get aggressive on lap seven. It took about nine laps today for this field to finally calm down. Been for a while at the start. Let's take a look back at some of that. Yeah, we've got that replay spooled up now that we've got a, an opening here. And uh, done again, we understand, involved in this as we take a look. Looks like, uh, oh, okay, out of the out behind the pace car and onto the front stretch here. Yeah, watch what Diego does at the start here. Starting in fourth place, the second car on the outside. He lays back a little bit. He tries to get the jump and it just it just doesn't work because everyone ahead of him gets a good start. So there were definitely games going on at the front of the field. And the initial contact up front row happens on the exit of the first game for the leaders between Fafa and Diego. Let's see if we can catch that on the camera here. Be... Watching was done again first. Yeah, we'll be able to see that just up ahead there. There's the contact. As Dunnigan follows. And it's down to the second chicane where Dunnigan has the, the issues that he did. There's a driver a little bit back in the field. Always a danger here at the start of these races, especially at a track like Monza. Down into De La Roja. Ooh, Dunnigan got turned around. Whoever that was, a little bit of a contact into the wall as well. Here's Garrido. This is Garrido with, I believe, it was with Pfeffer, wasn't it? Yeah, Diego no. had contact with Fafa right at the start of a race. This is watching him try and rally his way back up through the field on the opening lap because he lost several positions uh, when that contact happened. So we come back live. Garrido right now. Actually, where is Garrido? Trying to find him. Oh, he's DNF'd. Excuse oh, me. Right, yeah. 
Yeah, we've had uh, quite a bit of attrition at the start here, Joe. Maybe we should uh, go through a few of these cars that are no longer on the lead lap are James Hebb and Brett Thurman, and then cars out of a race or in their pits at the least. It looks like Jonathan Norman, our Christian Eisler, and uh, uh, Diego Garrido. So two of our drivers who started in the top six already done. Speaking of the top six, Classic Lupo still giving chase to Pisano. Pisano took that position a few laps ago, and Classic Lupo not since challenging to try and get back by. We actually have our first Ford just behind them. Jesper Derlicka climbed up to seventh from 11th. This has been a very good day for him. Let's put the cameras on the battle for 18th, because Stacey Dunn again and Luis Henriquez were just banning fenders going through the parapolica. So uh, these two are really putting the fight up against each other. But actually, it looks like Stacey's won that temporarily for now. But I'm sure each driver probably uh, muttered a word or two under their breath, because uh, the parapolica is not really a place you should be banning fenders with each other. They're closely followed by Thurman and Albright, but Thurman is a lap down. So he is not involved in this battle as we ride on board with the bright blue Ford of Henriquez. He gains into De La Rosa, but doesn't gain enough. He doesn't try and send one in on Dunnigan. Stays behind. Let's see if maybe he gets something later. A little wide through the first Lesmo, though, there from Dunnigan. I think we're about to enter a bit of a quiet stage of a race show. It looks like most of the drive, most of the battles we've got, uh, such, such as a battle for the lead where a driver is following the car in front, are just content to save fuel. And it, it, it looks like, you know, that's going to be a lot of what we're, uh, we're going to be seeing a lot of us for the next 10, 20 minutes until the pit stops happen. And that could shake the entire complexity of this race up. Uh, okay. Riding on the gearbox of Acosta, looking at Bean. And Munoz just, well, it looked like he almost would have caught him. I guess that was the, the Doppler effect as uh, he just falls back to 1.3 seconds now coming off the chicane. The one driver not content to be behind uh, the guy in front of him right now is Luis Enriquez. He's going at Stacey Dunn again, once again down into the Barabolica. He's going to try and look to the outside of him down the front straight. So this battle for 18th place is still on. They're about to hit the braking zone. Stacey Dunn again and Luis Enriquez going into the first corner. That's Enriquez on the outside there in the 4GT. Dunn again almost runs him to the edge of the track and Enriquez. It can't quite pull this off. So the calmness of the rest of the field, Joe, but these two are intent on being in front of each other. Fair fighting from both of them, though. Gave each other space through the corner, and it's going to work out in Dunnigan's favor for the moment. Enriquez could try and go back on the attack. It looks like Luis thinks twice of that. There is some pretty good damage on the back of Dunnigan's car, understandably so, with the opening lap problems. You can see it from our camera there. In, in the meantime, Enriquez is just climbing all over the back of that Ferrari. Yes, yeah, so done again. Started 16th, is down to 18th. Enriquez qualified 22nd, is up to 19th, and wants one more. I think there's a bit of a top speed game going on here, Joe. It, it looks like, uh, it, I mean, they're two different cars, and that does play an effect here. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, I seem to recall Pfeffer uh, saying that he doesn't think the Porsche is going to be all that competitive here. Well, right now we've got Ferrari, 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 Ferrari. Then we got a Ford down in seventh. That's the way Enzo would have liked it. But uh, talking about Pfeffer, he's down in 13th. I mean, we saw him have a couple of offs early on. I don't know if that's got Gazy's car damage, but yeah, he's just riding around in 13th place. Not what we expected from him today. Yeah, his season kind of started that way, unfortunately, so... Bad habits reappearing, unfortunately, for the number 66 as he works his way through Redifilio once again. Basagalupo still giving chase on Pisano, but now Jesper Derlicka has actually caught this group. It is only five tenths of a second between the former champion and these few. He comes out of the second Lesmo giving chase. The first non-Ferrari out on the field. 
Yeah, I think in spoiler alert, I think in the movie Ford versus Ferrari, Ford end up winning. I'm not sure we're going to see that here today. All those people who never read the history books are mad at you now. I gave them a spoiler alert. They had time to fuck it. With them all three in a line coming down to the Parabolica, but nobody close enough to go on the attack this time by. Still not even halfway through this race, and we're not expecting many drivers to do an early stop, especially with the fuel saving a potential strategy around here. But look at them all swing wide off of that final corner onto the main straight. Basigalupa with a decent exit. Let's see if he can maybe make an attack on Pisano down to the first chicane. He's gaining a little bit of a weave to the inside and then back to the racing line for Pisano, but no chance for Lucas this time. Yeah, top three are closing up now. Paulo Munoz is only about a second back of our race lead. I don't know if he'll do anything when he catches uh, top two. Uh, they still all have about five seconds on David Holland. Our biggest mover right now, I believe, is John Ambrose, who sits in 11th. Started in 21st. We talked about this a little bit earlier. And he made a few inroads on Cal Quinn. He was down to four point some seconds, but it's gone back up. So he must have made a mistake in that last corner as the sun finally comes right out and blasts its way onto the track. Yeah, and let's not discredit the fact that John Ambrose had the slowdown penalty early in this race. So he's been our biggest mover despite that slowdown penalty. Granted, I think he got all those positions back when he navigated his way around that big wreck we saw uh, where Diego came back on the circuit. I imagine that was a big help. I think Enriquez just lost a spot. And indeed he did. It was Stacy Dunnigan who managed to sneak by after a mistake through Della Rosia for the Ford driver. But we're going to take a look at the top three once more. Munoz down to five tenths of a second. Beam, still close behind, has not made any attempts at overtaking Acosta since we've looked early on in the race. They swapped back and forth a couple times, but it's just stayed as what you see right here ever since then. I gotta imagine that Bean and Munoz are teammates here with virtually identical looking Ferraris. So I don't know if there'll be there'll have been communication between them. That Bean said, "Hey, I'm just saving fuel here. Acosta's got a pretty good pace going on," and then Munoz might come back over the radio and say, "All right, I'll do that too," and uh, see how deep into this race they can go before they have to pit. Or, well, of course, he might say, "Screw that! I want the lead." <laughs> You know, the way that those two are behaving, I almost, if I was Munoz, I'd say might as well upset the apple cart and throw a wrench in things, try and pass them, see what they do. Well, uh, I we can't have, imagine... Have had a, uh, sorry, Elijah Mitchell is pit, pitted. Go ahead. Yeah, I can't imagine this is good for Acosta, Joe, because he, he's not saving fuel at all lead in this train around. The only thing he might be doing is just lifting and ro rolling and coasting into the corners, knowing that Bean isn't going to pass him. Down in sixth position, uh, Pisano. Oh, Abasigalupo got him. Where did this happen? Checking to see how recent this pass was. And it looks like, yeah, it happened this last time into the Redifilio chicane. So at the start of this lap. Here it is right here. Nice job from our director finding this just straight up slipstream down the front stretch gets to the inside and behind them Derlica giving watch not interested in trying to take advantage of it Classic Lupo now moves himself back to fifth that's an opportunity to save more fuel there where to, when two cars in front of you trade positions like that you just roll out earlier and I said Derlica was one of those that used it very well before so i suspect he's doing that right here the 97 just riding behind although he might want to get a little bit closer they come around the curva granda does pisano try and retake it or is he also going to maybe try and save a little bit of fuel he's been breaking the air for basigalupo for quite a while now so could be returning the favor 
Yeah, maybe it was a strategic thing and they talked about doing that. Also, looks like LeBlond is pitting. I think this is scheduled. Now, I was so focused on Ambrose trying to catch Cal Quinn, which has gone in the reverse direction. He's actually been caught by Christopher Pfeffer. Well, and this looks like it's going to be an easy pass because he's taking it down into the second Lesmo. Usually not a place that you see an overtake, but clearly with a lot of pace over the number zero zero, he's going to come back at him. Is that a little bit of damage on Pfeffer? Maybe hurting his top end speed? Or is that just the Ferrari's raw pace as he's almost shoved off the track coming into the Ascari chicane? Cuts back. Could he get the run off the corner? He tries to get the power down and it's looking good on initial acceleration. They start to drop. Fred is behind them. That's also for position. And now he drops back once again. Pfeffer thinking twice about it down into Parabolica. I think it is Ferrari's real pace. It tells you why we have Ferrari up in front of the field. It also tells you why Pfeffer's trying to make a pass in the infield where his Porsche might have a bit of an upper hand. He goes, oh, Ambrose is going very slow. He's just going to let him have it. Well, maybe he sees the speed that Pfeffer's got and he thinks it's wiser to just let him through. Fred is just happy about that. Look at him, <laughs> maybe taking a little duck to the inside down into the first chicane but comes back behind them oh and he runs into the back of him john ambrose making contact Good. and where do you fair fair just hit his incident limit oh no he's not happy about that he just got on the radio with a, a bit of a, a sarcastic thank you to john ambrose well sarcastic maybe but ends the race where things weren't going his way to be honest so uh it, mind you, I'd say that. It was coming back around on him, wasn't he? Working his way back up to the top 10. But the spread of field in that top 10, it, we haven't mentioned it, Trey, but it's became quite significant all of a sudden. About half a minute from first to 10. You know, looking at the top three, they're certainly not suffering from that problem. Credit to Holland, though. Holland was about, wasn't he six seconds behind Munoz when we last looked? He's got oh, it down to five and a Munoz. half. In comes Munoz. Munoz electing to short pit here. He's splitting it right at the halfway point. I don't entirely know the wisdom behind this, but uh, we'll find out. Yeah, especially since he had only recently caught up to the top group, I would have thought it would have been a good idea for him to continue to hold on to them. He finds his stall nice and safely. We haven't had anybody up, uh, I would say, even within the top 15 that have pitted yet from what we've seen. So there shouldn't really be anybody who's pitted that comes out near him. Munoz taking his time. And he's got his fuel. He is going. Is he going to come out into clear air or will he be stuck in traffic? I hope that the field has spread out quite significantly like we were just saying. So yeah, he gets out in a pretty good space there. Uh, 13th place behind Leif Peterson. The problem is not too far ahead of Leif Peterson. John Ambrose and Fredes are running nose to tail, so that could hold him up if he catches them. And Ambrose might be suffering from a little bit of damage on the nose from the thwack that he had to the back of Pfeffer. Is this hurting his straight line speed? Fredes might think so because he's looking to the inside, but he can't get the pass done down into the Delarosia chicane. So they'll flip to fight another day and Ambrose retains that 10th spot. Change for 16th place. Don Bowden just got by, by Christopher Albright. Two names we haven't mentioned really yet. And the reason we probably haven't mentioned Christopher Albright is because he started all the way back in 28th. I probably wouldn't have thought we'd be mentioning him till he was getting lapped, but he's been a big mover so far. And into the pits comes Kaden Bean. You know what I think might have happened here, Joe, is that Munoz came out of the pits into clear traffic and told, told Bean the coast is clear. But uh, and Bean won't have to take that much fuel. Now, because he's been saving fuel behind our race leader, Costa. But the problem here, Joe, is I'm worried he's going to get dropped out right into that battle between Ambrose and Fredes. That would not be a good pit exit. Yeah, not only could that hold him up, but that is a danger zone for potentially getting involved in that battle and getting damage himself. I'm watching Munoz to see where he's going to be as Bean is out. 
getting his speed up. Munoz just now crossing the starting line, and he's actually going to be clear of his teammate. Interesting. Bean yeah. was two seconds slower in his stall. I mean, these two have got a break in that they've came out and cleared traffic. I still don't know how much I like this strategy, though. I think uh, they may be doing that Acosta a bit of a favor because Acosta, I mean, I mean, even though he knew Bean wasn't going to pass him, he still had to keep an eye on him in his rearview mirror to make sure he had, wasn't overshooting his braking points or anything. Now Acosta has a track to himself. That might cause him to run a couple of fast laps up there. Well, if these teammates can get a little bit closer together, they could maybe work together to gain some speed as we come down to the battle once again between Pisano, uh, Derlica, and Basagalupo. This is currently to settle the third spot overall right now, but they have yet to take their stops now that Munoz and Bean have. They're obviously up a couple positions. And Acosta is in. So this is Acosta, I think, covering off any kind of advantage that uh, Munoz and Bean might be getting by running out there in that clear air. He says, OK, well, I'll join the fight back there then. The problem for Acosta is he just had to pass the lap car. I don't know if that would have cost him time. We're watching this battle go on down the front straight, but I can tell you that Acosta's in his stall and we'll watch him on pit exit in a moment. Are these guys going to get through turn one cleanly? It looks like they managed it. And Munoz is coming out of Parabolica right now. Acosta, whoa! Acosta, two seconds quicker than Munoz. Incredibly quick stop. Granted, last time Acosta a little bit low on fuel. Did he play it too tight yet again? He'll come out ahead of Munoz as well as, of course, Bean, naturally. But has he got a save from here? That's not going to be good if that's the case. Now these guys are about to come up on uh, Fredes, but Fredes has actually lost a lot of time to John Ambrose. I don't know what the story is behind that. There is uh, a good amount of lap traffic around where these guys are right now, as well as these cars that haven't pit yet. So uh, th this could shake things up a little bit as they get through the field. And the driver who could benefit from all of this if they do get held up, Joe, is David Holland. Absolutely. I was just looking at him to see if he was going to come in. He's actually coming down to the Parabolica currently. I wonder if he has someone up on the box letting him know not to come in, just in case he can find some time as they're dealing with the traffic. He does indeed stay out. Or does he? No, he doesn't. He comes in. Late turn in. And behind him... We also got Basigalupo pitting, making sure that it's clear that uh, he doesn't get ran into by Pisano. We have seen that before multiple times in this series. Derlick is going to take the opportunity to try and take the position away, and this will effectively be for the lead, even though they have yet to pit. Derlicka, when was the last time we saw Jesper up at the front in this series? It's been a minute. And Carol Shelby is... Uh... Probably up in heaven, coming God to let it rain and lightning and crash on the surface right now. A little bit of a challenge down into the second chicane, but Pisano pulls back in line. Waiting for some of our drivers back there to get back out. I see Holland has returned in seventh, and he is well behind Bean, so he gained a little bit, it looks like, in the stop, so... Not a huge amount, maybe a few tenths. Yeah, uh, another thing we've got to remember is these drivers who are pit navigate their way through these other cars that haven't pit yet is that they are full position. So um, I, I thought I saw just a, a moment ago that uh, Acosta, yeah, he's, he's still right behind Fredes. And Fredes is in under no obligation to let him by. Fredes is blinking, that's not going to make Costa's life. We're taking a glance at that as Acosta trying to get by. Even though he's on the inside, is Fred is going to try and fight it? He does a little bit, but unfortunately, the wave crashes over him and Acosta will not be denied. Meanwhile, both Derlicka and Pisano are coming in to pit. Fredes should be the last one that needs his fuel. 
So Lightning will not end this race, and it looks like a Ferrari will go back into the lead. But, hey, Ford had it for a moment. <laughs> and uh, Acosta going to cross the line as Fredes ducks in, as we expected, about as far as he can go. Very small pit window here for this round because of how thirsty this track is. Acosta back to the lead. Munoz back to second, being to third, of course. What about Derlicka with Pisano? Pisano's going to get out in front of him. Derlicka, though, a very quick stop. Actually, the quickest of anyone in the field, if I'm seeing correctly. 15.2 seconds versus Acosta's 15.5. So if Derlicka can make it, theoretically, Acosta can make it. Oh, that's a good sales point for Ford. They're getting better fuel mileage. And that puts Derlicka back in P5 now. In fact, now that our pit stops have finished and we've got quite a spread between our top five, let's go through our order, giving you an idea of the top ten and the stories they've been going through. Up at the lead, Abner Acosta they started it on pole, and he didn't lead the whole way. He lost it a couple times, but he punched the hole in the air, and we thought that he was going to have a short or a long stop. That wasn't to be. He had oh, Trelika, Trelika has spun. Trelika has spun, and he's, they're having a dodge him on the straight. He was parked in the middle of a straight and loses two positions. That was a hairy moment. And that was all on his own. We're going to see it's down and out of the second Lesmo. Ooh, the car was already looking shaky, and then once he hit that AstroTurf, wow, he did a fantastic job of keeping it out of the barriers. Great yeah, awareness. If, and if we continue this replay, Adrilika went off at Ascari, and I think he'll he'll get a slowdown penalty for this and have to yield the position to Border, uh, who's that green for GT, and Border is about to be now our lead for GT. Now there's the cut chicane. He didn't cut it that much. Yeah, he did a very good job of trying to bleed it off. Oh, but he's coming in. What in the world? Uh, maybe it's him calling it a day. That'd be a real shame, especially with how he was driving. He still was up a bunch of positions. Maybe these extra spins made it too tight on fuel and he knew it. We come back to the battle that is just passing him now. John Ambrose in the double lots is leading Ignacio Fredes to try and sort out the last of the top 10. Yes, we feel this battle has been on for a little bit. Uh, Ambrose is one of those who's going to have an interesting story to tell at the end of this thing. Absolutely. And Fred is looking very good through the first chicane, getting himself within reach. How aggressive does he go, though? The number 96 is going to peek to the inside a little bit but decides not to try and make the pass down into De La Rosia. And still a little ways to go in this race. It's uh, because of the long straights here, obviously the fuel tanks on these cars are thirsty that narrowed their pit window up quite a bit. And these drivers still have uh, a lot of work to do before the check flag flies. I think Enzo is going to have to get his sunglasses out because it's been pretty bright recently. And that's meant that the temperature is up to 99 degrees Fahrenheit. This is much harder, hotter than it was in warm-up. And what's happened to Jasper again? Oh no, he spun once again on his own, this time in Della Rosia. Well, things were going well. It's starting to fall apart from a little bit. I yeah, think he's still up this. away, David. Yeah, there's, it was in the second chicane, so we've... Uh, oh, actually, no, wait, here it is, sorry. I thought we were going through the Lesmos. Sent it completely around. Sends him down to 18th with that extra pit stop and the spin. Certainly going to be kicking himself over what was a potential very good finish for him as we come back to Ambrose and Fredes. Still Ignacio not passing him. 
Ambrose, one of our big movers through the field. Another driver who made up a lot of spots earlier. We gave him a quick shout out was Christophe Albright. Unfortunately, he is still sitting in his pit stall. I don't really see any damage on the car, but not in a hurry to come back out, sir. Albright's race, uh, uh, at least competitively, seems to be done. We should give a shout out to Christian Eisler. He is back out there on course trying to get some points, but unfortunately, uh, the attrition hasn't been a lot of it in this second half. Oh, okay. He did come out to do some laps. He's uh, picked up a couple of positions and then pulled it back in. Yeah, so he only got six points last time. Is off track goes Ambrose. Out of the second, Lesmo Fredes sees the opportunity. He knows he's got the momentum, but he's being forced around the outside. And it looks like John is not going to fight it as he gives a lift down into Ascari and pulls in behind the number 96. Back up in fifth position, Basigalupo and Pisano. This has been a great battle for much of this race, but right now it's being led by Lucas. Oh, rear end stepped out under brake in there, and I'm sure Anthony caught onto that. It says, ah, so Lucas is struggling a little bit with handling here. He might be a shark smelling blood because he's right on his rear wing here through the Curve Grande Day. It's uh, difficult to try and make a pass through here, but. Coming out of the Curve Grande, you can try and make a pass in the chicane. Unfortunately for Anthony, he's on the outside. That's going to be the hard way around. He knows it. Backs out early. Maybe we'll try and do a crossover and make something happen to the Lesmos. But no, Lucas gets through there well. And Anthony will have to wait until next lap. Looks like John's got the spot back. And that happened down into the first chicane. So that moves him back to 10th. They keep swapping like this. Is that for position behind them? Yes, it is. That's uh, Leif Peterson that's chasing in the blue Porsche. He's gained a lot of time recently. You can watch as we ride on his dashboard how much larger both the double lot and the 96 are getting. Also worth noting that Paulo Munoz had cut the gap to the lead down to, I believe it was about six tenths of a second for a while, but he's lost it. I'm not sure if that was lap traffic or what happened, but Munoz for a brief while was relatively close to Acosta. Yeah, they have had a lot of lap traffic, but he's still within two seconds of Acosta. Oh, so another mistake from Ambrose. Off track, and that's going to let both of them by. Out of Ascari. So Fred is up to 10th, Peterson up to 11th as we were watching the battle as well between Basigalupo and Pisano. That went to Pisano down into the first chicane. Yeah, he was able to slipstream by him and take fifth position, but uh, don't worry, I'm sure we still haven't seen the end of this because we'll see if Basigalupo can get it back. Hard Maybe to... not now, but he's got 14 more minutes. Hard to know where to go to with all the battles that they've got. Lee Peterson doesn't just want one, he wants more. And he's going to have to do it the hard way because he's on the outside of the first apex. Oh, very hard way as they come together, not once, but twice. That sends P uh, Fredes off the track and Ambrose gets at least one spot back. Yeah, I think what Leaf did on the exit there was kind of... I don't know if it was retaliatory, but hey, you did it to me, I'll do it, I'll do it to you as well. So, so yeah, I guess by definition that is retaliatory. Uh, and both cars are going to come off a bit worse for it, and this could be uh, good news for John Ambrose. Another look at that replay. That was some harsh stuff between them. Yeah, well, this... I mean, it started off as a mistake from Fredes. He overshot the first corner and got into Peterson, and then Peterson says, oh, we're going to do that, huh? Oh, yeah, just... Lewis Hamilton him off the track, I guess you could say. Shoved him off and took the spot. John Ambrose now chasing Leif Peterson. They go through the Ascari chicane. This time a little bit cleaner for John. Last time was the one where he lost those spots when he cut the course slightly. And this is a great run off of that chicane. He's going to be able to get to the inside of Peterson. Can he manage to make this stick into the parabolica is the question. And as they break for that corner, 
He's a little bit stronger, but he also goes way deep into it. And Leif Peterson could get the over under potentially. He's got a nose inside, but now, Sam, it is a drag race down to the first chicane. And a drag race that Ferrari should win on power, but the laws of physics and wind work the same for each car, and that's going to be playing to Ambrose's disadvantage. So Ambrose holds on for now. And now I think he's got to put a good lap together because if he can try and break the slipstream, uh, Peterson might be carrying a bit of damage from his running with Fredder, so maybe Ambrose can pull away and solidify this 10th place. Up ahead of them, Pisano and Basagalupo still close to one another, trying to figure out how the top five will finish. We ride on board with Lucas now, looking ahead at the 255. Can't wait till this race ends to see if any driver in the field has got zero incident points. <laughs> It'll be a tall ask today for sure. Especially it with may be a Costa. And I, I want to say he's done that before at some very difficult tracks. He certainly knows how to win a championship. He's got one under his belt. He's looking for a second one. And those bonus points matter, even if he's got a bit of a gap now. Onto the front stretch. Basigalupo, though, giving chase on Pisano. Not nearly close enough. Still looking at about nine laps, ten laps to go here. Lap traffic. Maybe that could play a part in this. That's Yaniselli up in front of them. That, could that be the pick that Basigalupo needs? Stay to the outside, so don't think he's going to get that help this time by. Giannicelli wants no part of this fight. Good for him, just uh, getting out of our way there. I thought I saw a car running wide in the background, but it's not the case. Yeah, so um, I wonder if these drivers enter the sizing each other up phase of this race. If someone like Bassi Galupo starts wondering, Hey, maybe I should be the car in second on the final lap. I don't think Munoz has an opportunity to size him up right now because if Acosta's worried about fuel, it's not looking like it. He's got a 2.3 second gap. Munoz has been losing time on him. And I haven't seen Acosta show signs of, of trying to lift and coast or ease his pace up at all. He is still out there running blisteringly fast. Yeah, I was wondering about the battle for fifth, but yeah, this, I mean, the bigger the bigger lead you build, the more cushion it gives you on any kind of strategy, doesn't it? So Acosta holding down a two-second lead, and to the credit of the field, to the credit of Munoz and Bean, that's the biggest lead we've seen so far today. We've definitely seen some races, especially professionally, but also on iRacing, where the lead is sometimes over two seconds uh, by the end of lap one. Yeah, it seems pretty closely matched today. I'm sure the draft uh, helped that somewhat. Two cars within range of one another. And meanwhile, what happened to Rodriguez? Looks like Kenny managing to get 21st spot. Oh, and... Uh... 32 car field, uh, 20th place finish is definitely bragging rights, so you got to get 21st before you can get 20th, so go in the right direction. Looks like Yanticelli just didn't want to fight that one and let him through down the front stretch. He, he had bigger fish to fry. So we now watch them live. Oh, did, did John Ambrose cut the chicane? Because he's suddenly losing a lot of spots here. I think, I think he cut just barely too far in on the first apex. We're just a little far back here. Here we'll see it. We'll watch the first turn in here. Yeah, he was pretty far inside. No, oh, I racing. Like pulls over and lets them through. Nice news, of course, as iRacing is all electronic scoring systems, so uh, whenever you do something like that, there's no question about it. 
So that means that he's got to retake those positions yet again. How many times have these three changed around? I feel like it's been a dozen or so. I think from lap three onwards, when Acosta made a mistake, it, it it's almost been like there's been nobody in the same position that they started. Right now, Acosta is. He's obviously leading this race after starting on pole. Bean started third, is running third. And, uh, oh, the drivers in 16th and 17th. Done, done again in Mitchell while where they started. Done again def <laughs> definitely hasn't been in that spot this whole race, that's for sure. Yeah, but, and it, normally it's because they, you know, it's like being drunk in an earthquake. It balances each other out. <laughs> this kind of explains his race very, very well. He's been hanging out with Bill, I think. <laughs> Caden Bean uh, might have a chance to get by Munoz here. We're watching him now. Down to half a second between them. And they are teammates. So how far do they want to fight? You know, I'd have to check exactly where they are in the championship. Mundo sits 11. I've been by. I've been by. They're only two seconds or so back from the Costa. If Bean is faster, you know, then get this win. Yeah, and it doesn't look like Mundo's uh, worried about the championship at this point. So I'm kind of with you. Might as well try and help Bean however possible. So far, Caden not making the pass. And we'll see how things go here. And of course, you can always talk out strategy into, hey, if you don't get the spot, then I'll give you the position back later. I always like that strategy. We never see that enough. Yeah, not uh, not something we really see often here in the sim world. It tends to be more of a real world thing. Boy, both of them taking a lot of curb down through the Della Rosa chicane, though. They clearly are pushing. And so, what, Acosta still just handing a tick over two seconds ahead of him. Not that much lap traffic ahead of him right now. The next, the last car on the lead lap is Dralika, who's finally stopped spinning. He had another spin that we didn't get on camera. He's in 18th. All right, Beans sticking his nose out here, and Munoz lays out of it. So, Bean is free. Can he run down? He won. Well, there's one more driver that's not in the position they started for you. Yeah, we need... We need Dunnigan uh, and Mitchell to switch the spot, so Costa... <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah, this is down between Fredes and Peterson. Fredes actually took a look on Peterson into the first corner, but couldn't make it stick. Leaf managing to fend him off. They've dropped John Ambrose ever since he had his cut course penalty. You can see him in the background. It's about a second and a half gap, uh, gap back to that red Ferrari. And uh, unless these two start fighting, it's like he's really got much of the pace to try and chase him. Still, we're seeing a lot of blinking from Fredes. His connection hasn't been the best. It's always a little bit annoying when you're battling the driver. But you know what? If it's going to happen, it might as well happen on a track here, such as Monza. You can uh, make clean passes here. Look at that gap. Now, it's actually gone up since Bean's taken second. He's three seconds back of Acosta. Yeah, I wonder if both of them are struggling for pace here at the end. Temperature still hovering to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest I've seen it so far today is 102. We're just about at high noon. Actually, we are at high noon right now. So how far up? How far up is... The next lap car on Acosta. You mentioned Derlicka is the next one, and it looks like he's a couple laps away. So even if Acosta catches him with a three-second gap, it doesn't look like it's going to affect the battle too much. And in fact, are we two laps to go this time? Uh, yeah, let's find out here. Yep, Acosta crossing the finish line with about three minutes left on the clock takes over a minute and a half to get around here so two laps left to go for Acosta 
And the good news is he's not the other side of a cut-off time, you know, where he would have to extend it to three laps or whatever, and that starts to put everyone in jeopardy on fuel. All right, here we go, second place. And Bean stays in front of Munoz. Oh, we're not really making any attempts to try and catch him. In fact, Munoz very slow there. Oh, is that slow a slowdown down. from Munoz now? Yeah, but that's got to be my guess. But at this point, though, they might as well just fight it out for second and third. There, uh, and the battle for fifth still on, though. Yes, broke up a little bit, but if there's a mistake from Pisano, Lucas might be able to get him. Something, something's got to be wrong with Munoz. He's continuing to drop. I think fuel is short for the 3 2 1. He's now 2.3 seconds back. I wonder now that if he's got an idea of how many laps are left, he's realized that he's short. Yeah, he should have started to save him way before now. Yeah. <laughs> Reach into the choir, buddy. <laughs> Oof, this is this is bad. And and David Holland, 7.2 seconds back, so he's got buffer. But again, like you said, if he is that far short, it's going to be a lot of time that he's got to give up. Holland could find himself back on the podium again. Well, the final lap is getting set and start, so we'll see as all these leaders make their way on down the front straight. And so Ferrari doesn't want to see his Ferrari 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 be dropped away. Heaven forbid the border get breaks into that top six, but you know what? I think he'll be content with a seventh place today after starting 12th. Yeah, it's been a nice job from Borda. Something of a quiet race out there. I think Munoz, who was two seconds slower last time, has started to stop the fallback. It's it's hovered at about 2.1 to 2.3 now for most of the lap. So maybe it wasn't fuel in the end as we look at fifth once again, side by side. Oh, no, and Basigalupo over the sleeping policeman. And that definitely will be a slowdown as well as potentially some damage on the under tray. Pisano gets fifth. The good news for Lucas is he has 11 seconds uh, before the next car behind him. The bad news is that's going to end one of the uh, good battles we still had left. There's still one for 10th place. Peterson and Fred is about to start their final lap nose to tail. But Acosta already deep into his final lap and he's thinking about that victory. Yeah, Peterson looks pretty safe here. Coming down to the first chicane. He's got a decent gap back to Fredis. Not going to be able to try and send one in, although he does close up under braking. Continuing to give chase down towards the Curva Granda. Ah, but he's once again falling back a little bit. And unfortunately, we won't get to cover it because we got to go to our leader, Abner Acosta, with what will be his fourth win of the season. The number five, another victory, extending his points lead here in Italy. Number five is alive. Always a great feeling to win at Monza, especially in the Ferrari. Even if it is a sim world, Abner Costa, a well-deserved win there. And Bina Muno is going to get podium positions behind him. And with a fourth, Pisano, of course, a fifth place after Basagalupo's mistake. He is almost three seconds behind him in the end. Borda, our first non-Ferrari with the seventh place from 12th on the grid. Not a bad job for that green machine. The battle for 10, who's gonna win out on that? It looks like it's, it will be Leif Peterson as we watch the drivers in front of him cross the finish line. Peterson and Fredes are coming up to the Parabolica right now with Peterson having about a second advantage and uh, the, the three-way battle they've had going on, it looks like John Ambrose is going to lose out on that a bit in 12th place by then, but still not bad considering he started 21st. Peterson up from 23rd, by the way, so 13 positions gained for him. Last one on the lead lap is going to be Elijah Mitchell. I'm not seeing much well, in the way of battles behind them. Well, well, yeah, unless Elijah can get it from the Dunnigan. car in front of oh, him. Yeah. Stacey Dun Dunnigan, uh, just a couple of car lengths up the road. So this is for 16th and 17th place. You can see the damage to the rear wind of Dunnigan as they work their way through the Parabolica. 
Out and around the final corner. I think Dunnigan's got it as they come to the line. So the 899 is going to manage to finish in 16th spot. Elijah, the last on the lead lap. And that takes us to a quick break here on the Global Sim Racing Channel. We'll come back with the unofficial results as well as driver interviews. So stick around, especially because on screen, we'll see all the upcoming races here on the GSRC. Welcome back to Monza. We just watched round eight of the PRL GTE sports car series and Acosta took another victory, extending his points lead. So it was 20 coming in. Eisler having a horrible day. It's going to be a lot bigger after that. Uh, Caden Bean, though, was the one that finished in second, followed by Paolo Munoz. Those two teammates in the bottom steps of the podium, uh, obviously outpaced by Acosta, but can't be too disappointed with the pace that he's shown all season long. Holland finishing with a much better fourth than what we saw compared in Spain. Anthony Pisano manages to get a top five, having battled with Lucas Bastogalupo all race long. A late race slowdown penalty for the 26 makes him settle for sixth place. Fernando Borda, the first driver that's not a Ferrari, uh, to get seventh place here today. And Sean Romig takes eighth behind him. Horatio Calquin ninth. Last of the top ten went to Lee Peterson. And he also won a three-way battle we saw in the closing laps there. Second in that battle was Ignacio Fredos, who finished as 11th. And then John Lambros came up short in that final battle, but still a decent day in 12th. Sean Duhamel finishes in, in uh, 13th place ahead of Luis Enriquez, another one of our four GT drivers out there. And Don Bowden gets 15th. 
Stacey Dunn again and a line from Mitchell where our last two cars in the lead lap nose to tail at the line and then one lap down was Donald Olsen in 18th behind him Kenny Rodriguez and Gary Schillen all the way from 30th on the grid up to 20th. Francisco Yanacelli finished in 21st and it's James LeBlanc behind him in 22nd. Spencer Zimkovic uh, was P23. James Hebb was the last driver one lap down in 24th. Jesper Derlicka, mysterious circumstances for him. We're not sure why he had to pit again and also spun a lot of times, but he was 25th in the end. Brett Thurman was P26 and Christopher Albright in 27th. Then you get into the DNFs, Jeff Carollo, Christopher Pfeffer, Christian Eisler, Jonathan Almanar, and Diego Garrido. A lot of fast names down there at the end of the field. We do have our winner ready to talk to us, Abner Acosta, coming back with a victory once again. And Abner, it looked like uh, you had a little bit of company behind you, maybe riding on your coattails. Uh, we thought that you would come out slower than everybody on the uh, on the pit stops, but in the end, you had one of the quickest. Uh, what's? How did you manage to save fuel out front? Yeah, I... Uh... Hi guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I started saving since the beginning. Uh, I saw Caden. Uh, he got really close to me, and he passed me. And as soon as he passed me, I just started saving. Even when I was ahead, I saw that he was saving behind me. So in this track, you're at that scenario where either you just keep going and try to lose the draft, which I knew I wasn't going to do that with him. Um, so I just started saving ahead of him too. And if he wanted to pass me, he he could that whole time. I believe so. Um, I guess he didn't. He decided to save us well, and uh, it just ended up like that at the end. So you came into this with a 20-point lead over Eisler, who had been uh, outpaced by you pretty much the whole season thus far. And now you come out of it with an even bigger gap since Eisler had a horrible day today, and you took the victory as well as a pole position bonus point. But with two rounds left, do you ever really feel like you can relax uh, in the points championship or do you truly feel comfortable? I really don't feel comfortable. Um, I've had uh, is connection issues in the past and I was even, even before this race, I had connection issues and I've been dropped out of races before for connection and things like that. So I don't have a drop week anymore. So like I, I'm always cautious and I, I'm never safe until it's like the last race and it's like a definite well, we'll keep an eye on you and all of your rivals. Congratulations on today's race. Is there anybody you'd like to thank for this victory? Yeah, I want to thank my team, uh, Mivano uh, Sim Racing team. I want to thank my spotter for today, which was Moises, and he helped to help me out with uh, the saving of fuel and uh, uh, the fuel and everything, fuel consumption. And uh, all the guys at MBR, I want to thank also... Um, Buck Kicker and Simsa and you guys for broadcast. Well, thank you very much. That was our winner, Abner Acosta, once again taking victory number four this season. Up next, Sam has a conversation with Mr. Bean. Oh, you beat me to it. All right, Mr. Bean here. Uh, you fin uh, can I get one thing straight uh, straight away? Are you and Paulo Munoz teammates? Because I noticed you have very similar paint scheme. Yeah, we are. Me and. Uh... Paulo and Anthony are all teammates. All right. How much discussion was there going on between you two about uh, slipstreaming each other, trying to save fuel, or trying to come up with an attack plan to try and beat uh, Abner at the end there? Quite a, quite a bit of discussion, actually, but unfortunately, we just couldn't do it. He was too quick there at the end. How difficult was it being the car in front or being the car that was following? Because I noticed you you seemed to catch Paulo quite quickly at the end there. I don't know if he had a better pit stop than you, but um, at the once you got by him, it, it seemed you know it it wasn't that much better. Abner still had uh, two or three seconds over you. Yeah, unfortunately, you kind of chose a bad place to uh, pass him, which did lose me some time, but. He, I think he really started pushing once he saw that I got by because I was catching him when I was behind Paulo, but just couldn't get it done. Now, it looked like something happened to Paulo with a couple of laps to go. I don't know if he got a slowdown penalty or needed to save fuel or anything. Uh, before that mistake happened, once, once you realized Abner was out of your grasp, was it game on? Were you, were you two uh, going to fight it out for a second those last couple of laps? 
Uh, we weren't really sure because we were just kind of hoping that anything could happen to the leader, but it didn't. So we were planning on battling, but then he only had one or two instant points to spare, so we decided to just take it easy behind me. Oh, okay. He was almost near that uh, incident limit. I believe we saw uh, Pfeffer got, got called out by that earlier on. Well, um, I'm glad he didn't hear it. <laughs> that that would definitely would have uh, been a headline there at the front of the field. But I'll tell you what, it it, was, it wasn't first place for you, but that's still a well earned uh, second place finish. Uh, I, I'm assuming you're happy with that. Oh, very happy. I mean, I was I didn't know what to expect coming this series, be my first race and all. I knew I had to take it easy because I was on the nice. They just weren't sure about me coming. Well, you're in a Ferrari at Monza on the podium, so it's got to be a good feeling. Congrats on your second place finish, and uh, hey, that's your first race. I'm sure we'll see you on the top step before too long. Thank you. That was second place finisher Caden Bean, and now we've caught up with Paulo Munoz, last step on the podium, who started from fifth on the grid. Paulo, you got into third pretty early in the race, but looks like you had a bit of a scare uh, in the first few laps. Lap four, and noticed uh, you almost threw it away in the second chicane. Yeah, uh, that was a scary one. I was the whole race. I was over driving the car. I, I carried in too much speed into that one, and luckily I saved it. Uh, saved it because he was going round. It, it, it looked pretty scary. We didn't get to cover it live during the race, thankfully for you at least. But after that, uh, you managed to stay up with the leaders a little bit, and then the pit stops happened, and suddenly you found yourself uh, in in second place. I mean, how realistic did you feel about trying to to catch up to Acosta and take the win, or did you were you pretty sure that uh, he was going to be able to stay ahead of you? Well, uh, I felt the pace was was pretty even at a point, but three or four laps after I stopped, the car just it was really hard to to make a turn, so I started piling up uh, incident points, and at a point I had I think eighteen. I said, okay, that's it. I'm just gonna drive to the end and if Caden passes me like I'm just gonna let him pass and drive safely to the end yeah he was telling us about the the incident point worries uh, we did notice that it was uh, uh, getting pretty hot out on the track towards the end much hotter than the race started at so it sounds like could you feel that on the track you said the car was handling very differently yeah definitely uh, both uh, because of the tire wear and and the, the track was pretty hot, so especially in the Lesmos, making the car turn there, especially the second one, uh, it was pretty tricky. Well, that makes it all the more impressive that you managed a podium there at the end. Before we let you go, anybody you'd like to thank? Oh, yeah. Uh, I would like to say uh, thank the team, everyone in the team, Anthony, uh, and, of course, uh, Simsa and Bud Kicker for sponsoring the lead, and Bud Kicker, JL Designs, and um, from a Hypersoft for sponsoring our SAR, my team. Awesome stuff. That was third place. Paulo Munoz talking to us about his race. And that's going to close us out. But before we go, we also want to thank some people, mainly the sponsors of, of this series. Simulation Motorsports Affinity can be found at simsa.net if you want to check them out. Big thanks for sponsoring the season and the series as a whole. And of course, to Butt Kicker. They have some prizes for our championship this season. And you can find them at thebuttkicker.com. Also, a big thank you goes out to IESN. iRacing has put us on, on the iRacing Esports Network once more. So uh, make sure and subscribe and you get the opportunity. All you got to do to do that is click on the big red button that says subscribe. It's just that easy. Thanks to the companies that provide the software and the hardware for our broadcast. They're listed here on your screen. And additional thanks go to June Lalonde, who provides our wonderful music. See the screen for how to get a hold of more of her great work. Thanks to the team today, Sam, Sean, and Dougie. If you'd like to find out more about GSRC, including upcoming races, you can find it at GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. You can also check us out on social media. Our Twitter is at GSR Channel, Facebook, Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. If you'd like to support the channel itself, check us out on our merchandise store. It's GSRC.StoreNV.com. We've also got a link in the description of the YouTube video and also... Our next race is going to be at Interlagos. That'll be Tuesday, November 12th, a week from now at 9 p.m. Eastern. We have upcoming races for other series listed on the screen, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. But until next time, race clean, race hard. We'll see you on the track.